guys, it's Dr. Azadeh Shirazi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a board certified cosmetic dermatologist practicing in La Jolla, California. And let me tell you, I have been receiving so many messages, DMs, emails, calls, texts from everyone and anyone so concerned and alarmed by the latest breaking news that benzene, a known carcinogen, has been found in all these commonly used sunscreens and after sun care products. But before we start this conversation about this alarming news, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you turn on your notifications so you know when I post a new video. And I would love, love, love to hear from you. So make sure you like and comment down below. Let's talk about what's going on. So Valisher is an independent lab and they went out and tested 294 very commonly used sunscreens and after sun care products and found 78 of them, so almost a quarter of them, to, to be positive for significant levels of a compound called benzene. Now benzene is a known carcinogen that's been linked to blood cancers like leukemia, lymphoma, and I felt the need to put this information in the right context because yes, you should still wear sunscreen. And no, this is not because the sunscreen that, that was sitting on the shelves went bad and started you know, forming this carcinogen in it. So let's start from the top. What is benzene anyway? Benzene is a colorless liquid, almost yellowish, tinged organic compound that is a component of gasoline. Um, it was frequently used as a solvent for rubber plastics. We are actually exposed to it in our normal daily lives, especially if you live in a big city, you know, exhaust, the gas, if you smoke, there's a lot of benzene and tobacco products. There's just, benzene is, is, can be anywhere and everywhere. And um, it's not something that is supposed to be in cosmetics and sunscreen or, or creams in general, but if you test enough products, you will probably find benzene in them. It's also used in the extraction of oils from seeds and nuts. It's seen in emissions from burning coal and gas. It's in our environment, we can't really get away from it. Now, exposure doesn't necessarily mean absorption of the chemical. And the way we absorb benzene is really important because inhalation, if you inhale it like gasoline or tobacco, that's the worst form of it. You're gonna get a big dose of it into your system. The second worst is ingesting it. So sometimes it can be found in medications or other things that we are not aware of due to the way they're made. Lastly, topically on the skin. So if you put a cream on your skin, you're not going to get that much absorption if it's a small area. Now, if you were bathing in the sunscreen and it had high levels of benzene, but who goes out and covers themselves head to toe multiple times a day, every day with sunscreen? I mean, even if the sunscreen had benzene in it, that's how much you would have to apply to actually get enough of this carcinogen for it to make a difference. Now, if you have a skin disease or skin condition that makes you more prone to absorbing things from your skin, like if you have eczema, then you're gonna get more absorption. And then the other set of population that I would worry about are babies or young children that can absorb things from their skin more readily than adults. It's not really clear how much benzene you're actually gonna absorb even if you were exposed. So stay calm, you know, getting these messages, oh my God, I've been using Neutrogena spray on my kids, you know, every summer. Well, hello, me too. I've been spraying my kids down with Neutrogena spray, you know, this whole time as well. So it is alarming. I'm not saying, I'm not downplaying it but let's put it into better context. Okay, for instance, so Valisher compared the highest level of benzene contamination to urban air breathing for 24 hours. So let's say you're in the middle of New York City or in the middle of Los Angeles and you are breathing the air for 24 hours. That is estimated to be about applying 10 mLs of contaminated sunscreen to your whole body and if you did that your absorption of benzene would be about half the amount of benzene that you receive from breathing city air for 24 hours 
So breathing city air for 24 hours with that level of benzene in Los Angeles is about half the amount of benzene that you would absorb if you were to use a sunscreen product from head to toe. So you see, your skin is actually very, very well built. It's built to protect you from getting all this absorption, even though it may have it in it, but doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna absorb that much. The other major point to take away from this is that this is not a sunscreen issue because I'm getting calls saying, okay, the sunscreen lists, I can't find benzene in my sunscreen. No, you're not gonna find it. It's not supposed to be in it. It's a contamination. And if you have avobenzone in your sunscreen or oxybenzone, that is also not the same as benzene. Avobenzone does not break down and become benzene. So those are really important notes. Balisher went out and did extra studies and looked at six active sunscreen ingredients just to see if these ingredients actually degraded and became benzene. So they looked at avobenzone, oxybenzone, octanoxate, octosylate, homosylate, and octoacrylate, and they actually did not degrade into benzene. So if you see that on the ingredient list, don't get alarmed that this is going to go to form the carcinogen benzene because it's not. Really what's happening is the way that these sunscreens are manufactured and produced, for whatever reason, they are getting this in the sunscreen as a contamination. It is not supposed to be in sunscreen. Now, you should definitely still wear sunscreen because if you don't, then you're gonna put yourself at risk of getting a melanoma from UV radiation. UV radiation is a known carcinogen. It causes skin cancers like melanoma, which is a deadly type of skin cancer, like basal cell skin cancer that causes us to have cancer surgically removed that can lead to disfigurement and you know all these unwanted things. So in medicine, we always look at the risk versus the benefit. And the risk of actually absorbing enough benzene into your system to cause leukemia is much lower than the benefit of preventing you from getting an actual skin cancer. Now, I think you should be smart about this. So let's see what we, how we can maneuver this so we feel good, we feel good about putting these products on our children is there is a list that is linked in the uh, caption of this video that tells you which sunscreens were tested and were not found to have benzene and which ones that were tested that were found to have benzene. Now, they don't go out and test every single lot. I have a million skincare products in my office. I couldn't find a sunscreen, but if you look at your sunscreen, let's just pretend this is sunscreen. The bottom of the packaging, you should have a UPC number, and then there should be a lot number, and then there should be a expiration. So you have to check to see if it was that actual batch. So lot number is like the batch of sunscreen, right? Because they make these products in in bulks, right? And they they say, okay, this is patch batch number, you know, X blah 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 and so you want to make sure that you are comparing the actual batch and the actual product to what is listed in the list provided by Valisher. So if you look at those three markers and match it up with the ones listed on the sheet then you'll be able to tell okay this particular batch was tested and was found to have benzene or this particular batch was tested and did not have benzene. But what about all the millions of other products that were not tested or that lot that wasn't tested? See, this is where it gets really difficult and we really have to push the FDA to do a better job of having quality control, these measures in place in terms of you know supply chain, manufacturing, to make sure that we are producing clean products. Um, and you know that's been one of my major focuses. We are getting our products tested because we want to know, you know, is this an issue in in my skincare products? So I think it's really important that this is a nice reminder or awakening for us to do a better job in terms of quality control for some of these products. Now, the other thing that you can do, and I know this is what I'm going to do, how it's going to affect my 
practice is I'm gonna probably have my children and myself to rely more on rash guards, seeking shade, instead of having to apply, you know, a spray sunscreen from head to toe every two hours. Um, that's when absorption and real exposure becomes a risk, is when you are soaking your skin in the sunscreen, bathing in it multiple times a day for, you know, quite a bit of time. And that's when you really get the exposure and the risk is by doing that. So the safest thing to do is to cover the little ones in rash guards and yourself even if you're gonna be out in the sun and apply it to smaller areas of the, of the skin. But do not, and I'm repeating this, do not let this prevent you from using sun care products because UV radiation is a known carcinogen. So guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope that cleared things up for you. And if you have any questions or comments, if I left something out, let me know. This was a very last minute on the spot lunch break YouTube video. So I hope it was helpful in clearing some of the anxiety you may be having and check out the list and be sure to follow me on Instagram, Skin by Dr. Ozzy and TikTok, Skin by Dr. Ozzy and listen to the podcast More Than a Pretty Face, all linked down below. And don't forget to rate, review and subscribe until next time. Oh, 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 oh,